Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel and welcome to another RT Autism Moms Chronicles. Today's RT Autism Moms Chronicles is a Black History Month spotlight on this beautiful lady, the late, great Lena Horn. But before we get into her story, here is the intro and I'll be back after that. Lena Mary Calhoun Horn was born on June 30th, 1917 in Brooklyn, New York. Both sides of her family were biracial African-American. She belonged to the well-educated upper stratum of black New Yorkers at the time. She lived for the first five years of her life in a brownstone at 519 Mackin Street. Lena Horn's father, Edwin Fletcher Teddy Horn Jr., a one-time owner of a hotel and restaurant, was a gambler. He and his partner, the gambler and philanthropist, Gus Greenlee, owned the Belmont Hotel, where Lena came to live with him from age 18 until her marriage the next year. Her mother, Edna Louise Scottrum, was an actress with a black theater troupe and traveled extensively. Edna's maternal grandmother, Emily Louise Ashton, was born in modern day Senegal. Horn was reigned mainly by her grandparents, Cora Calhoun and Edwin Horn. When Lena Horn was five, she was sent to live in Georgia. For several years, she traveled with her mother, and from 1927 to 1929, she lived with her uncle, Frank S. Horn. He was the dean of students at Fort Valley Junior Industrial Institute, now part of the Fort Valley State University in Fort Valley, Georgia, who later served as an advisor to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. From Fort Valley, southwest of Macon, Horn briefly moved to Atlanta with her mother. They returned to New York when Horn was 12, after which Horn attended St. Peter Claver School in Brooklyn. She then attended Girls High School, an all-girls public high school in Brooklyn that has now become Boys and Girls High School. She dropped out Without a diploma, at the age of 18, she moved to her father's home in Pittsburgh, staying in the city's Little Harlem for almost five years, learning music from native F Pittsburgher Billy Strayhorn and Billy Eckstein, among others. In the fall of 1933, Horn joined the chorus line of the Cotton Club in New York City. In the spring of 1934, she had a featured role in the Cotton Club Parade starring Adelaide Hall, who took her under her wing. Horn made her first appearance on screen as a dancer in the musical short Cap Calloway's Jitterbug Party in 1935. A few years later, Horn joined Noble Sissel's Orchestra, with which she toured and with whom she made her first records issued on DECA. After she separated from her first husband, Lena Horn toured with band leader Charlie Barnett 
1940 and 1941, but she disliked the travel and left the band to work at the Cafe Society in New York. She replaced Dinah Shore as the featured vocalist in NBC's popular jazz series, The Chamber Music Society of Lower Basson Street. The show's resident maestros, Henry Levine and Paul Laval recorded with Horn in June 1941 for RCA Vicar. Horn left the show after only six months when she was hired by former Cafe Tradero manager Felix Young to perform in a Cotton Club style review on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood. Lena Horn already had two low-budget movies to her credit, a musical featured called The Duke Is Tops, 1938 later reissued with Horn's name above the title as The Braun Venus, and a two-reel short subject, Boogie Woogie Dream, in 1941, featuring pianist Pete Johnson and Albert Almond. Horn's songs from Boogie Woogie Dream were later released individually as Soundies. Horn made her Hollywood nightclub debut at Felix Young's Little Track on the Sunset Strip in January of 1942. A few years later, she was signed by Metro Goldwyn Mayer, also known as MGN. In November of 1944, she was featured in an episode of the popular radio series, Suspense, as a fictional nightclub singer with a large speaking role alongside her singing. In 1945 and 1946, she sang with Billy Eckstein's orchestra. She made her debut at MGM in Panama Hattie and performed the title song of Stormy Weather. Based loosely on the life of Adelaide Hall for 20th Century Fox while on loan from MGM, she appeared in several MGM musicals including Cabin in the Sky, with an entirely African-American cast. She was otherwise not featured in a leading role because of her ethnicity and the fact that her films were required to be re-edited for showing in cities where theaters would not show films with black performers. As a result, most of Horm's film appearances were standalone sequences that had no bearing on the rest of the film, so editing caused no disruption in the storyline. One number from Cabin in the Sky was cut before release because it was considered too suggestive by the censors. Horn singing, Ain't It the Truth, while taking a bubble bath. This scene and song were featured in the film That's Entertainment 3, which also featured commentary from Horn on why the scene was deleted prior to the film's release. Horn was the first African-American person elected to serve on the Screen Actors Guild Board of Directors. In Sigfield Follies, she performed Love by Hugh Martin and Ralph Blaine. Horn lobbied for the role of Julie Laverne in MGM's version of Showboat, having already played the role when a segment of Showboat was performed in Till the Clouds Roll By, but lost the part to Ava Gardner, a friend in real life. Horn claims this was due to the production's code ban on interracial relationships in films, although MGM sources state she was never considered for the role. 
In the documentary, That's Entertainment 3, Horn states that MGM executives required Gardner to practice her singing using Horn's recordings, which offended both actresses. Ultimately, Gardner's voice was overdubbed by actress Annette Warren Smith for the theatrical release. Horn became disenchanted with Hollywood and increasingly focused on her nightclub career. She made only two major appearances for MGM during the 1950s. Duchess of Idaho, which was also Eleanor Powell's final film, and the musical Meet Me in Las Vegas. She said she was tired of being typecast as a Negro who stands against a pillar singing a song. I did that 20 times too often. She was blacklisted during the 1950s for affiliations with the 1940s in communist-backed groups. She would subsequently disavow communism. She later returned to the screen playing Claire Quintana, a madam in a brothel who marries Richard Whitmark in the film Death of a Gunfighter, her first straight dramatic role with no reference to her color. She later appeared on screen two more times as Glinda in The Wiz, which was directed by her then son-in-law, Sidney Lumet, and co-hosting the MGM retrospective That's Entertainment 3, in which she related to her unkind treatment by the studio. After leaving Hollywood, Horn established herself as one of the premier nightclub performers of the post-war era. She headlined at clubs and hotels throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe, including the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas, the Coconut Grove in Los Angeles, and the Waldorf Astoria in New York. In 1957, a live album entitled Lena Horn of the Waldorf Astoria became the biggest selling record by a female artist in the history of RCA Vicar label at that time. In 1958, Horn became the first African-American woman to be nominated for a Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical for her part in the Calypso musical Jamaica, in which Horn's request featured her longtime friend Adelaide Hall. Horn was long involved with the civil rights movement. In 1941, she sang at Cafe Society, New York City's first integrated venue, and worked with Paul Robeson. During World War II, when entertaining the troops for a USO, she refused to perform for segregated audiences or for groups in which German POWs were seated in front of black servicemen. Horn was at an NAACP rally with Megger Evers in Jackson, Mississippi, the weekend before Evers was assassinated. And at the March on Washington, she spoke and performed on behalf of the NAACP. She also worked with Eleanor Roosevelt in attempts to pass anti-lynching laws. Lena received numerous Grammy awards and accolades during her, her life, including being an honorary member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, my sorority. Lena Horn died of congestive heart failure at age 92 on May 9, 2010. Her funeral took place at St. Ignatius Loyola Church on Park Avenue in New York, where she had been a member. Her remains were cremated. I hope that you enjoyed this information in regards to Lena Horn. I'll leave additional information down in the description. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Also, follow me on my other social media, TikTok, Instagram, and 
on my spoken word channel, The Purple Diva Den. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace and blessings.